Welcome back everyone to the beautiful world of React with WordPress. This is a new episode. In this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to convert the login component uh, into a functional component. And earlier, we were going ahead and pulling the data uh, that we need from the local storage. But now we're going to pull it from the uh, context API that we have created. And since we're already taking all of the information that we need from the uh, local storage into a context API, we don't actually have to do that on each and every component because that data will already be available in the uh, context API uh, inside of the store. We, we can grab the token and the username in whichever component we want, whether it be parent or child or nested component could be anything for that matter. Awesome. So let's convert and this is also going to teach you how to convert a, a class based component into functional based component if you have an old project and you're converting that into uh, using hooks uh, into functional component that can be easily possible so let's start all you have and just get rid of all of this and equals round brackets and then convert it into an arrow function and over here Let's just grab all of this and get rid of render because this function itself is equal to render and just paste it here. So now we only have return, we don't have the render. Awesome. Next up is you don't want the constructor. So I'm going to get rid of constructor because this is a functional based component. And I'm going to pull data out of my uh, context API from this context store global store so we'll say const and we have the store that we have already defined into our app provider you have the store and the set store function which we are passing to the provider we'll just use that set store use context which is react hook makes our life easier I just love it and we're just going to pass the app context that we've created okay and we'll just pull the uh, use context from React. Awesome. So we got that so far. And the next thing we do is just say login fields and set login fields function. If you have not never worked with React Hooks, there is a tutorial. You can go my playlist onto my YouTube channel and you will find the tutorials for hooks you can use okay so we'll use use state and then set an initial state to all of this that we had copied from the state earlier uh, we don't need the locked in because we're going to check that information from the store okay all right so you've got use context we also need to have the use state okay so you've got all of that now this will be const because this is no longer a functional component. This again will be const as well. So inside of the form submit, we have all of this going on. No, this will no longer be the state. This will be okay. This will be actually login fields dot username, login fields dot password, etc. So login field just change. All of this state to login field so I just copy pasted all of that okay so this is changed next up we instead of saying set state we already have a method called set login fields which we're going to use so I'm just going to change this to set login fields and earlier set state has a callback function uh, which gets rendered after the state is changed uh, however hooks don't use state don't so we're just going to Take this out, this xus.post. Okay, and we get rid of this callback function and put them put this into a separate line like this. And now use it here. Okay. Now we've got the xus.post. We have a site URL login data, which is brilliant. Uh, we check rest.data.token, which is great. Again, this instead of set state, we're going to say set login fields okay and over here as well we're going to spread whatever data we already have because like i showed you earlier otherwise it's going to override all of this and just put loading over there so it's important that you spread it the existing so we don't lose the existing state values 
okay so we've got that then again over here as well we spread the login fields and then we set the value of error and the loading over here it's better to put them into separate lines so for readability yeah this is great awesome okay then we have the token user nice name where's that data uh, we've got the token available here nice name great awesome so we set login fields set login fields and then we need to spread the value of the login fields and then we don't need the logged in is really true over here okay awesome and let's look at this again we need a spread operator instead of set state this will be set login fields and then we need to spread the login fields data over here and along with this we also need to set the value in the store so once the user is logged in i want the store to have the uh, new value of the token etc so for that all i have to do is use set store function which we already have on top so just to show you we have the set store from the app context uh, so we'll just use that function and we spread the store value so we have the uh, so it's going to spread all of the store values from here and then set the username and token override the username and token okay so the username will be not user nice name just username will be equal to user nice name okay this is going to go into an object and then also we would need to set the value of the token because in case if the user logs back again then the token value would be different okay so we'll just set it so now this will set that in the store so that anytime you if the user goes ahead and closes the browser it's going to come back again it's not, not closes the browser but uh, if other components want to uh, grab the value of the username and the token they can grab it from the store so it will set at the time of the login awesome and we also setting into the local storage so that in case if the user uh, you know, accidentally closes the browser then when the component gets rendered again then it's uh, our app provider is going to go ahead and grab the value from the token and the username from the local storage and just set that to the store so that he he doesn't have to log back in again okay awesome so we got that as well and uh, next up is uh, we have the handle on change function so we take care of that as well so we just say const over here and then instead of using set state we need to use a set login field again and just spread the value of the login fields okay awesome and then pull all, pull all of this data we don't need logged in okay and then we don't need the value of the user from here and instead of logged in now since we have this store available we can just grab the value from the store itself so if store dot token if store contains the token which is our context api then redirect the user to the dashboard okay and over here instead of this dot we get rid of all of the this because we don't need them just get rid of them and i think that should be it let's have a look so we log out log back in so currently have a look at the store we Initially, the token value in the username is empty. Why? Because when the component gets launched, it's gonna app provider is going to get uh, rendered. It's going to set the initial values these, and that's what we see over here. It's going to go. Uh, this function will be called. Uh, it will check if the local storage has these values. If they had, then it's going to set it here. Otherwise, they'll just be the default values. As you can see, local storage doesn't have these values currently, so it's not going to pick up that. Okay, and um, that's it and then 
when the user logs in then it's going to take care of that so let's log in now so when we log in you can see that now store has these two values why because when the user logged in can you check that over here we are setting the store value to the nice name that we have received and the token that we received that's why now you see token in the username into the store it's context api okay and all of the uh, other functionality that were happening earlier is anyways happening if we just changed the syntax basically uh, to a functional based component rather than a class based component so that's all and everything works as expected the way it was before uh, the last thing we need to do is take care of a logout component so let's go to navbar and here we have something called logout so when we log out we not, not only need to remove the value of the token but we also need to remove the username because remember that we have the username as well so we need to remove that as well i think we missed that in the previous video so we need to remove that plus we need to remove any values from the store uh, we have and before i remove it i just want to show you that if you close the tab that still works so let's close it let's open it and you can see the user is still logged in why because when like I explained to you earlier uh, when you close the tab and you reopen this app provider will get re-rendered is going to get, grab the value of the token and the username because it's still there into the local storage it's going to grab that value and it's going to set that to the store that's why when you see that the moment you reopen the browser like we have done here let's close again let's open inspect element and you can see that we still have the token and username is because we are using the use effect so think of this as just like componented mount uh, with the react hooks now you can uh, rather than having separate functions for different jobs you can have one function and take care of all of this into this rather than having componented mount and other functions for that matter i'm not going to go into detail of that i've already explained that in the react hooks tutorial but in use effect we this when the component gets mounted uh, is going to be called and it's going to grab the values from the local storage token and username from here and it's going to put that into the store store will have these values so hence the user will stay locked in because we are always grabbing that value from there anyways coming back to the logout so when the user clicks on logout this button right here we want to set these values to empty just remove it basically and we also going to take care of the store so we're going to say set store so for that we just have to grab the store so store set store is equal to use context app context just love app context is super amazing we don't need the username anymore get rid of that um, use context got that and since we've got all of that just use set store oops function it's going to take an object spread remember don't forget to spread the existing value of the store otherwise you'll you're going to override the entire store grab the extra, uh, existing value then just override the token and the username so token will now be empty and user name will now be empty okay awesome now if you check currently we have the value click on logout there you go now you can see store is empty okay so you'll have to log back in again awesome there are so many tweaks that we can do there's so many things that we can do because it's a large application we will continue to do that but i think for now this is good enough because we need to i want to help you with that this so that your app is ready for production you don't have to worry about you know uh, making changes in small things uh, again i'm going to share the tips and techniques uh, as we proceed along there's a lot to share there's a lot of security thing that we can take care of as well but i'm going to be guiding uh, that to you as we proceed along okay so in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a custom endpoint in rest api wherein we're going to fetch all of the data and we're going to probably uh, get as close as this basically just display all the posts with authors and all of that 
into our dashboard over here when we click on all posts okay so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up uh, do follow me on github so you hit the follow button you should get that somewhere here and if you like the video if you like the help that i provide please start my repository to support me over here and do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already please also follow me on twitter my twitter handle is imdon 8 second all right brilliant that's awesome take care bye bye